What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about getting ready for the next recession. Let me go ahead and outlay some bad news. If you're not currently prepared for the recession that we're in, there's nothing you can do about it. You're going to be stuck with paying higher rent, higher gas prices, higher food prices. However, if you change how you think and you start prepping for the next recession because in the future we're going to have another recession in the future we're going to have another economic downturn uh, the last one was 2007 2008 11 and 12. so it's been about 10 years since we had a recession so they seem to come every seven to ten years so one of the things that you need to do is to start managing your money differently and i got some help for that this video of the economic institute of uh, the institute of economic thought is brought to you by glendon cameron school where i teach a course called home economics this is the foundational money course which teaches you how to optimize and manage your money and this is the first thing you need to do before you start making more money, which is the second step, which we will get into this video. Links below, go ahead, enroll in today. And if you really want to enhance your situation, enroll in the Rebirth of Hustlers Kung Fu, where we're gonna get into fundamental business education. Once again, Home Economics is the foundational course that teaches you how to manage the money that you make now, which is critical for your future business success. All right, so there's a lot of people on YouTube talking about this is where you put your money now to prepare for the recession. And I'm gonna say most of that is crap because here's the stats. 81% of America makes $35,000 a year or less. So that means that the vast majority of America doesn't have surplus money. Every penny that they have coming in goes to rent, food, gas, daycare, whatever. So these people are operating in a financially deficient state. It's a state of lack. This is a state, and this is why I feel that videos that create the dream of you quitting your job and having all of this freedom and making all of this money do so well because the average American is pressed. The American, average Americans pressed for money, they're pressed for time, and they're pressed for happiness. And one of the things that we do here and with my collection of channels in the Mac Daddy Media Network is I tell you the truth. And this stuff isn't pleasant to hear that right now we're in the recession and unless you have made preparations years in advance, there's really nothing you can do except get hit upside the head by the recession. So the first thing that you need to do to prepare for the next recession is to get out of debt. And right now there are many people encouraging you to get into debt. And I had a conversation like if you have a second rental property okay and you have a mortgage of 2000 and the most you can rent that car out that house out for is 2000 that to me is bad debt because it doesn't generate positive cash flow and based upon what I've been doing I've been watching a lot of real estate videos and a lot of these houses are not really cash flowing significantly they're cash flowing maybe 200 maybe 500 I have a friend that's a real estate investor and she's been doing this about 12 years and now she's gotten into the point where her properties that have mortgages, she's able to get rental rates where half the rent goes to the service of the mortgage and half the rent comes to her. And it took her 12 years to get to that point. But if you are a rookie real estate investor, you are making equity in the appreciation of their house. 
but you're not making any cash. You would be better off starting a simple eBay business that you devote 25 hours a month to and you would make $1,500, $2,000 a month, which would be better than, you know, but here's the lure for that. You're not using your money. You're using the bank's money and you're leveraging your credit to get this asset that at some point in the future may pay off. But in the beginning, it's not making any money. So one of the things that I would advise you to do is to get out of stupid debt. Once again, buying a piece of real estate and not having a significant cash flow, meaning like my friend, she owns 15 houses and all 15 of them deliver because I think she charges anywhere from 1500 to 2500 So on the $1,500 houses, she gets $750 a month, which is like $10,000 a year. So across her 15 houses, she's making a six figure spendable cash income, which is pretty good, but it took her a while to get there. And she had to buy her houses correctly. And the pandemic actually kind of dampened that because she had five houses where they were not paying rent. They were going to work every day, but because she could not evict them and get them out, they didn't pay their rent. So number one, we want to assiduously avoid stupid debt, credit card debt, HELOCs, car loans. We want to avoid all of that to prep for the next recession. Now, once again, you should enroll in home economics that will teach you how to manage your money. And then the second thing that you need to do to participate in the wealth transfer, because the wealth transfer, we have a wealth transfer, well, Honestly, the wealth transfer happens every day. The wealth transfer happens every year. There are people who are making a lot, <coughs> a lot of money from people who are transferring it to them. So the, to participate in the wealth transfer, once again, uh, someone said, I lost credibility because I'm not in the stock market. Let me explain something to your silly ass. I make more money in one month than you make in 10 years in the stock market. That is the thesis that I operate on. Having a business that produces cash flow is better than investing. You can get there in a Ferrari, which is a business, or you can ride in a horse-drawn buggy carriage, which is investing. Investing is the slowest way on earth to make decent money. It is the slowest way. And one of the things with the fire movement is like, you invest 50% of your income for 10 years and you'll reach fire. What did I just tell you? 81% of America makes $35,000 a year or less. So that means that 81% of America, even if they were able to invest $17,000 a year for 10 years, that would be a principal investment of $170,000. And at 8%, we're talking about, you might have 200, 300,000. You, so even if you were in a position to invest half of your income at 35K, it is still not enough to create sizable, appreciable financial assets. So most of America, 81% of America is not in a position to get rich through investing. I don't care what the Wall Street Trapper says. I don't care what Terry Ijeoma says. I don't care what Irish Journey says. The average American will never ever get rich through the stock market. It ain't happening. And what's on my side? Stats. I've looked at it. The average brokerage account of a 60 year old is $260,000. Uh, in the garage, I got $260,000 in depreciating assets in the garage. So miss me with the stock market making rich because I participate in the wealth transfer by starting a business providing products and services to people. That's how you participate in the wealth transfer. So number one, 
avoid, assiduously avoid debt. Assiduously avoid debt. And number two, start a small business, not a side hustle. And I'm gonna explain to you why I'm against side hustles. Everyone feels that they could create a side hustle which doesn't require 40 hours of work time and make significant money. All right, there's this thing called couch flipping. Uh, Ryan Pineda put up there and a lot of people are doing it as a quote side hustle. And most folks are not making, they're making maybe a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks a month, which is better than nothing, but that is not going to replace your income. So the side hustle mentality is I work, will work the least amount of hours possible and I will get the biggest economic benefit. And that is the side hustle mentality. Reframe that. Start a small business that over a period of three to 10 years, let me say that again, three to 10 years, you can take that small business and transition out of your job into that small business over a period of three to 10 years. And this will provide economic freedom and this will position you to take advantage of the wealth transfer. Right now, I watch a lot of stocks and this is something that I've recently done. I get a lot of stuff on my YouTube homepage that is garbage. Uh, these content creators, I know they're full of bullshit. So what I've started doing is hitting those, uh, you got these little three dots on your, you know, by the video and there's a little option to choose not interested and I'll ask you why you're not interested. I don't like this content to, so my homepage is getting cleaned up because most of these charlatan snake oil salesmen are trying to get money out of you through selling a course of something and it's not going to dramatically change your life. So number one, assiduously avoid debt. Number two, start a small business. Number three, do whatever you can. We're about to go through some categories. Let's say you're in income danger zone number one, less than $50,000 a year. I'm about to give you the playbook. You should not drive a car with a car payment. This goes back to assiduously avoiding debt. You should have a car that is paid off, okay? And one of the things that you have to do, and this is from Dave Ramsey, if you live like other people, if you live like no one today, you can live like no one in the future. So if you're in the income danger zone, number one, and you have a house with additional bedrooms, I suggest that you should house hack. Now what is house hacking? It's where you rent out rooms to people. And let's say you have a three bedroom house and your mortgage is 1300 and you rent out these additional bedrooms for 500 bucks. So that's a thousand dollars. That's $12,000. Now what you will do is take that $12,000 and then you will establish your long-term emergency fund. And then you will, cause once again, like this is kind of, I'm clumping it together. You will take that 12,000, establish your long-term emergency fund. You would take the income from your small business and you, you want to do all of this concurrently. You want to house hack, you want to assiduously avoid debt, and you want to start a small business so you can get more money coming in your life. So you take the house hacking money and you establish your long-term emergency fund. We will talk about that in a minute. And then you would take your small business income and then you would establish your short-term emergency fund. And then you will get to your family operating account. Once you get these three chunks of money, let's say you've got 15,000 in your long-term emergency fund, you've got 5,000 in your short-term emergency fund, and then, then you have a family operating account, which is two months of living expenses where you pay your bills when they come in versus waiting until you get paid. Once you have this chunk of cash, this will give you so much peace of mind. This will give you such a different attitude. And then, 
And only then, after you're out of debt, you've got your emergency fund, your short-term emergency fund, and your family operating account set up, then you can play the investment game. Now, once again, I'm gonna give you two scenarios. Let's say you're an average person, okay? Average person needs the long-term emergency fund, the short-term emergency fund, and the family operating account. If you are an entrepreneur, you need double that money, cash money in the bank. You need, let's say, $25,000 in your emergency fund, short-term emergency fund, and family operating account set up. And then you need $25,000 in your business accounts. As an entrepreneur, you never know when a business opportunity will occur. And you want to be in a position where you can take advantage of that business opportunity. And also, here's something else. If you have cash money, you spend it differently. When my kids were little and I would give them money, and they were like three and four years old, and we would go out and they would have money. They would have like five bucks, right? And they would see something they want. And they knew, it's like, well, you got money, go ahead and get it. It's like, I don't wanna spend my money, I wanna spend your money. They realized that they needed to hold on to that money. So when you are operating from a position of cash, you operate differently, much differently. You're much more careful, you're much more thoughtful, you're much more judicious. So once again, if you're an entrepreneur, you need the family operating account, the short-term emergency fund, and the long-term emergency fund set up. And then you need half the same amount of money in your business accounts. And what this will do is make you impervious to economic upheaval. Because when you're sitting on that much cash and then you have cash flow coming in, you can weather all of these storms and you put yourself in the position to take advantage of the wealth transfer. Now, once again, did I say you became a millionaire? No. We're talking about thirty to $60,000 cash money in the bank to give yourself a chance to win in the next recession. Like once again, if you're not ready now, you can't get ready. There is nothing you can do. And if you want to be one of those people, and I'm about to make a bold statement here, I feel that the economic downturn is going to impact the stock market long term. This is just the beginning. The stock market is going to crash again. Crypto is going to crash again. And you are putting your money into things that you cannot control. And that's a big, big thing. That's a big point that I want to make. When you have a small business, that's something you can control. You can, you're in paid ads, you can market harder. There are things you can do to make more money. But investing in the stock market, investing in crypto, investing in real estate, these things are literally out of your hands. Do you think the people in Florida who saw 30 something, 34% appreciation in housing prices, you know, and this is something else that, that has happened. Uh, the people who have these houses who have gone up dramatically in value, many of them are unable to pay their property taxes based on the new valuation. So they're having to borrow money to pay their property tax. And that's a really bad situation to be in because guess what? Your property taxes are due every year. So what are they gonna do next year? Once again, if you listen to me and you enroll in home economics, and you enroll in the rebirth of Hustlers Kung Fu, you will be positioned to win during the next recession. Like once again, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I am not gonna do a Graham Stephan or a Meet Kevin or one of these, this is where you put your money right now to be safe from the recession. It's bullshit. It's complete and other bullshit designed to get views and clicks and to get that YouTube money. It is not designed to help you. I am giving you information, telling you the truth, telling you what you need to do to prepare yourself for the next recession, which will be happening in seven to 10 years from the future, in the future. It's coming again. 
I've been through four, five recessions. Let me tell you a recession that I, I came in. This is a skill set um, issue. In 1990, we were in the recession <clears throat> and I got out of the military. But because I had marketable skill sets, and let me tell you, I went to Northside Hospital making 15 bucks per hour. And then there was something that I could do where I got an additional dollar per hour. And then I transitioned to night shift and I got an, a shift differential of $2, 250 So I started making 1850 in 1990. If you go ahead and put those numbers in the inflation calculator, I was making like 36 to $37 per hour. So one of the things that you want to do is improve your skill sets. Once again, if you're doing DoorDash and there's no shame for doing DoorDash, but I got a question. What's the end game for doing DoorDash? What's the end game for doing Amazon Flex? What's the end game for doing gig economy work? It's a trap. Because let's say you do DoorDash and you're in the good market and you're making 4,800 bucks per month before expenses. You, you can't do nothing else, but you can only make so much money doing DoorDash. So you're trapping yourself. I have, my girlfriend is um, in college and she's studying STEM. She's being recruited by Apple. She's being recruited by the FBI. And when she graduates, she's going to roll into a six figure job, six figure job. So one of the things that you want to do is enhance your skill sets while doing everything else that I presented in this video. See, you got to do multiple things. Success is not a simple one step thing. Like, you know, you do this one thing and you'll be successful. That's lazy folk talk. You need to do a lot of things concurrently. And that's when uh, they talk about the prison sentence. You will serve all of these years concurrently, which means at the same time. So if you had a prison sentence of 30 years, 30 years and 30 years, you had three charges and then they would say you would serve your, your prison sentence concurrently. You would only serve the 30 years. But if you had to serve your full prison sentence, you would die in prison because that would be 90 years. So one of the things that you want to do is all of this stuff concurrently. Get out of debt, set up your emergency funds, house hack, and start a small business. You want to do all of that at the same time. And if you are a person who's not self-directed, this could be a bit of a struggle. But this is the recipe, this is the framework to help you prepare for the next recession because um, debt is killing people. Credit card debt is at an all time high. Car loans, repossess, the repo man is repoing. The defaults on car loans is staggering. Credit cards, car loans, foreclosures are going through the roof because people have unmanageable debt. So the best way to manage that is not to get in debt. And I'm gonna to talk to you real estate investors because so many of you come at me because you don't understand what it is to create a business that creates enough cash for you to do the things that you wanna do. Level the fuck up and stop being a buster because Dave Ramsey, and many like I've watched many real estate videos and there are some people who tell the truth and they're like this one guy had six houses and it wasn't in one of these markets that dramatically appreciated and then he had some bad tenants and he had six houses and he said real estate investing was not passive he had nightmares let me tell you this happened to the guy at Pet Boys when I used to take my cars there he had an Airbnb in Tennessee he had some tenants and this is something that you should be aware of if you have someone who stays in your airbnb over 30 days that can constitute an informal lease and to get them out there to get them out of your airbnb if they stop paying you have to evict them and these people stayed in his airbnb and didn't pay him for two months and they tore it up cost twenty eight thousand dollars worth of damage $28,000 worth of damage. 
So everyone that's whispering Airbnb, real estate investing, as it is simple and, un and hassle free, I'm here to tell you it's not. And if you're not a skilled operator, because there's one guy on here, uh, he has like a hundred Airbnb units that he doesn't own, he's renting them. And I feel that the Airbnb arbitrage, I think that's what it's called, is gonna collapse once the economy starts rolling down and people stop traveling. Because once again, uh, one of the things we're going to touch in in Hustlers Kung Fu, the rebirth of Hustlers Kung Fu, is how to start a profitable business. And one of the issues that I consistently see, I have never started a business with debt. Never. And the car rental business was the most, uh, that's the most capital that I used to start a business ever in life. And what's funny about that is my first business, GC Solutions, I made $250,000 and my startup costs were zero. And my second successful business, I think I spent maybe $30,000 and it was successful. And I got my $30,000 plus a return within months. So one of the things that you have to understand is you can start a business with a moderate amount of money and make that business extremely successful if you do the work and you go ahead and position yourself to win. So once again, go below, enroll in home economics, or if you're fancy, get into the rebirth of Hustlers Kung Fu. Now, home economics is the only course that is mostly done. And in the coming months, I will be fleshing out Hustlers Kung Fu and there will be more things because right now I'm doing a lot of testing and things that I'm putting together. So be on the lookout for that.